Hello John, and today we're going to talk about your favourite people in Irish life. We're going to start off with politicians, but we'll cover literature and religion and maybe music also. So we're going to talk about the past, mostly for, for politicians, because they're the people you admire most. But let's start, start off with two that are in the present, John Hume and Seamus Mallon. Thank you. Um, yes, John Hume was, came from, if you like, nowhere during the civil rights in Northern Ireland or in the six counties as we sometimes refer to it. Uh, it comprises the six counties in Northern Ireland uh, that had been led for many years by the Unionist and Protestant persuasion and um, uh, Catholics had been discriminated about, about and a gerrymander of, of uh, areas were widely practised by the people that had been running that part of the country, the local government of the Unionist persuasion. Now, um, John Hume and others, Seamus Mallon, an author Seamus Mallon, uh, and Austin Curry was a very was another very important uh, person in that area. Um, marched on the civil rights uh, to look for um, laws to protect uh, and sa and safeguard and avoid this gerrymandering that occurred in Northern Ireland, and highlight this fact. They were attacked by extremists, uh, Protestant extremists during the course of that march, including by being attacked by the police, the Northern Ireland police in that uh, jurisdiction, including uh, the infamous B specials that were called B specials. So um, because of the publicity attaching to it and the behaviour of the people in charge, Gradually, uh, their success, uh, they, they were successful in highlighting throughout the world and particularly the British Isles of the injustices that they were suffering under in that jurisdiction. Now, John Hume went on to be a founder along with Seamus Mallon and Austin Curry and other people in that, in that jurisdiction to found the Social Democratic and Labour Party. But prior to them, I think there was another one called Jerry Fitt and Paddy Devlin. They were in Belfast and they also highlighted uh, the difficulties that Catholics were under in that area. Uh, this is now up to the 1990s, if you like, or the mid 1980s. So this is comparatively recent uh, that this occurred. So these people, these people, we owe a debt of gratitude to those people for bringing uh, the six counties area under democratic conditions, so which they, it is in today. They contributed to peace, yeah, well, and very that's, much that's so. why you admire them. And John it? Hume uh, was given many honours throughout the world including the Nobel Peace Prize, but to balance the uh, ticket from the point of view of the Protestant uh, area, uh, so was uh, the leader of the Unionist Party at the time, whose name just escapes me, uh, he, he also got, got uh, the Nobel Peace Prize, uh, so as to sort of have the Catholics and the Protestants in some kind of uh, democratic system. One of our most recent politicians that you admire is Albert Reynolds. That be yes, Albert Reynolds became Taoiseach uh, in the 1990s, I think it was. And uh, he had been uh, a businessman in, in, in uh, Longford and in Dublin and had uh, started a pet food manufacturing company which he named C&D Pet Foods. Uh, this became very successful prior to American politics and he employed about 160, 650 
Irish people in, a, in his factory, in his pet food factory in Edgerstown County, Longford, an area that was blighted by immigration and lack of opportunities for Irish people. So you admire him because he was maybe he innovative, was he was a good employer? Incorrect. And he also ran other businesses in the dance hall area and, and the entertainment industry. But he, he was a man of many talents. Uh, and um, so, Albert became a Fianna Fáil TD for Longford. And Fianna Fáil were in power at that time. I think Charlie Hoy was the leader when, when uh, Albert become teacher, maybe it was Jack Lynch part of that, but either way, Albert become a minister in the Fianna Fáil government. Albert is also responsible for, um, as the Minister for Posts and Telegraphs, um, right. for the infrastructure that we now have in broadband, because he... He did. Albert, when Albert became Minister for Posts and Telegraphs, as, was, as it was called at the time, uh, which was also in, 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 in charge of the telephones. At that time, a person wishing to have a landline might have to wait up to three years for to get a landline. <clears throat> Albert... He came along basically and changed that. He and changed the whole lot and a person that could have a telephone landline within a matter of about three or four weeks. It was a marvellous achievement. Of course, uh, because of his business uh, background, he was able to get the funds uh, and able to impress upon the leader of the Fianna Fáil party, Charlie Hall, the importance of the telephone uh, system for Ireland. So he, that's the, a major achievement that he did as Minister for Post and Telegraphs. Okay. Seamus Lamas, why is he important now, to you? Before I finish, Albert become, t he become Minister of Finance and then when Ch Charlie Hoy uh, resigned, uh, Albert become Taoiseach. He was an excellent Taoiseach and one of the first things he did was to make contact with the various factors, the factions in, in, in the six counties, including uh, the extremists and the Protestant side. Quietly, he actually was that person that made the foundation for peace and order in Ireland, a very important uh, in a very important achievement on Albert's part because without what he did that it would have taken a long time for the peace that is now in, in the six counties in Northern Ireland. He, it was him that set the, set the tone. He invited these extremes to meet him privately in various hotels, particularly Jewish hotel in Dublin, in a private capacity and was kept very quietly. Not alone did he do that, but he also did marvellous other things in the country, including one famous time in the EU when he claimed he got eight billion worth of subsidies for this country, which was languishing <coughs> without getting much. So he did that, but he was he was destroyed by the Labour Party led by Dick Spring with his with his political advisor <coughs> Fergus Finley, who now writes for the Irish Examiner. <coughs> they uh, uh, they pulled the plug on Albert and Albert had to resign. <coughs> this was completely unnecessary because Albert was one of the best teachers and Prime Ministers this country ever had. Okay. <coughs> we just move on there to, so I mentioned there, Sean, Sean Lamas. Sean Lamas. Sean Lamas was uh, a Taoiseach, a Prime Minister that succeeded Eamon de Valera. Eamon de Valera had been a Taoiseach and Prime Minister of this country up to the 50s. Now, and also Eamon de Valera was the man during the, between 1922 and 1938 that, that we had an economic um, war with Britain in, in which uh, we couldn't export Hanton to Britain. Uh, so that's another aspect of, of Eamon de Valera. Uh, but in any event, uh, Sean Lamas succeeded him, and Sean Lamas uh, is, 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 is considered to have opened up the Irish market to uh, investment from abroad, which had been very little prior to his 
becoming uh, Taoiseach and Prime Minister. He also uh, tried to establish dialogue with um, O'Neill, which was the Prime Minister of uh, Terence O'Neill, or was that was uh, in in Northern Ireland. He was the he was the Prime Minister of that area. He he had meetings with him, uh, but the Protestant extremists at the time uh, very much objected to it. Uh, so uh, that man O'Neill lost his position as Prime Minister. So there was a period of instability in that area, uh, but. Sean Lamas did try to make um, some sort of friendly, uh, friendship with that area. Uh, they spurned it at the time, as they spurned it for, for years afterwards, but eventually they had to come kicking and screaming, screaming into the political arena and make peace with their Catholic uh, neighbours. So if you were to sum up Sean Lamas, why he's one of your favourites? It would be that he opened up the country to other investment uh, from from uh, countries abroad because uh, we were we were a small country, uh, open economy. Uh, there was a certain amount of tariffs and protectionism for for the businesses that were thriving in the country. But there's another story there uh, that one might refer to if one has time in this discussion. Okay, so. Albert and Seamus and Sean Lamas were kind of similar in that they were business people. They had a business mind. They had a business mind. Y- yes, uh, entrepreneurial. Sean Lamas had a business mind, perhaps because of where he came from. And though he had been in 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 the Dáil for many years, uh, but he he did have an understanding of business uh, because he had a very able advisor, uh, Doctor Whittaker, in. The Department of Finance when he was in that, so he brought him. He was instrumental in also helping Sean the Master to open the economy. He could have done a Sean the Master could have done a better job because he he took I think sometimes as unfortunately a lot of subsequent governments he's taken short term positions instead of a long term vision of where the country should be. Eamon de Valera. What do you think of him? Well, Eamon de Valera, as regards throughout the world, is one of the leaders of this country that is known throughout the world. Indeed, the, the, in India, uh, Gandhi copied some of the policies that Eamon de Valera uh, uh, adopted. So he had many good policies, but unfortunately the civil war that occurred after the treaty that Michael Collins signed was not one of his better, uh, not one of his more noble uh, behaviour. He, he did try to make up for it throughout his life uh, by promoting uh, the Irish culture and various other aspects. He had a vision, uh, but it, it was slightly somewhat contaminated by the bitterness that occurred during the Civil War after we gained our freedom. That's a very sad chapter in our history and uh, I'm glad it's not as prevalent today but there are still scars of that unfortunate period and Eamon de Valera didn't cover himself with glory on that particular occasion. But yet you admire him, so to sum him up? Uh, To sum him up, he did leave a legacy and uh, he became president of the country and, and did a great job in the international stage. Don't forget uh, the League of Nations, which we don't hear much about. He was president of that uh, prior to the outbreak of the Second World War. So Ireland was regarded as a very influential and emerging country that stood for freedom and values that other countries admired. Okay, John, we're going to discuss in our next video We're going to discuss more about our politicians that you admire. Um, Thank you for now. Thank you.